First in the hospital, I was there for almost a month, and we did about six or seven surgeries to try and save my hand. And um, after after the last one, they decided that there was pretty much no saving it, and I told them, you know, amputate it. That's the, the fastest way out of here and the best recovery. And so we did that. Um, I was pretty pretty devastated. You know, everything at that point, you know, no more hand. So that everything goes to your head, like, what do I use both my hands for? You know, I can't play guitar anymore. I can't play piano anymore. I can't play drums anymore, which is what I did. You know, so I can't go home and veg out, play video games anymore, you know. So it was just all these things piled on top of everything. And I was really, really down about life. But uh, shortly after I got out of the hospital, you know, there's really nothing you can do. You can only be depressed for so long, you know, about something that you can't change. So I just basically moved on and, and tried to find a way that I could keep playing drums and came up with a design of my own, came up with a prosthetic, played with it for about a year and a half now. And then... Um, you know, when I met my drum teacher at Atlanta Institute of Music, uh, Eric Sanders, is when um, we came up with this idea and he um, reached out to Gil and kind of took off from there. So I've been developing robotic musicians for quite a while, uh, robots that can listen to humans and improvise and give accompaniment using artificial intelligence, artificial creativity. Uh, and Jason and his teacher at the Atlanta Institute of Music saw some of these clips online and actually they contacted me and asked me, can you use some of this technology to maybe develop some kind of a myoelectric arm, which is an arm that actually uh, can get signals from the muscle, so I can play again, because uh, Jason could play with some kind of device he created, uh, but he couldn't have control over his wrist and fingers, because he didn't have a wrist and fingers. And with controlling, uh, the, with flexing and relaxing the muscles, he hopes that uh, we'll be able to let him have the expression and control the bounce of a stick. Uh, as if he had uh, this wrist and fingers. Uh, we wanted to do two things. First, to address Jason's immediate needs, which is a stick that can uh, be controlled by the muscle, uh, how tight the grip is so it can control the expression uh, and the bounce of the stick. But I'm also interested in having humans interact with robots and pushing the envelope of what music uh, can be. So I suggested to Jason to build another stick uh, that will have a mind of its own, meaning it will listen to the music and it will improvise. And based on what Jason is playing and based on what other musicians are playing, it will actually ornament, enhance, and play off of the, the music that they're playing. And obviously uh, Jason was uh, up to it, and we developed an arm that has two sticks. Uh, one of them is mostly controlled by his arm, the second is mostly a mind of its own, and the interest is to see what, how does Jason respond to a stick that he doesn't fully control. He controls some of it because he can move it and change where it is, but he doesn't control every little thing about it and see if this will drive him to play differently.